So by applying that spatial constraint, you can see, or spatial joint, the grounded components no longer has the projectile listed, and it's been moved to the mobile group. So before I rerun that, I want to jump back into our output grapher, and I'm going to actually add one more trace. I am going to add a trace to the projectile itself so we can actually watch what it's doing compared to what the arm's doing. I'm going to go ahead and make it a green trace, and I'm going to select the projectile. I'm going to apply that, cancel. Now, before we run the simulation, I'm going to go ahead and turn on its Z graph, just like we had in the arm. Um, and I'm going to zoom back out, close this so we can actually run the simulation and see what happens. So now when we hit play, we can actually see multiple tracers running. We can see the pink one with the arm and the green one with the projectile. And now that we've added the spatial joint, you can actually see that the two are interacting properly. And here you can actually see the projectile being launched from the system. So let me open up the output grapher again while that's running in the background. And you can actually see in the graph the two positions, one from the arm tracer and one from the projectile tracer. And you can actually see the exact point in, at which they, they separate from each other. So let me go ahead and start that over again with the grapher running. Um, and I'm going to move this out here so we can actually see it at the same time. But if we hit play again, again, you can see both tracers running along the floor or the zero plane. And as the ball picks up, you can actually see that at this point in the graph, you're going to see the ball separate. So you're actually getting information from the graph and visually from the, the scene itself. Um, I'll go ahead and stop this. One of the other items in the output grapher that's nice is you actually have, along with the graph, you have the data that's generating the graph listed above it. And one of the things you can actually do that comes in very handy is right click on one of those columns. In this case I'm going to go to the uh, projectile and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say search for max. And it's actually going to jump the model to that position where we're at our peak of the trajectory. So this can also be done for finding, um, let's see, we can do find max, find mins, find the zero. Um, so this comes in handy also when you're looking at forces, so you can quickly find the max force or the minimum force and the position and time w at which that happens. Um, we could, if we wanted to, check this checkbox under the FEA column and choose to export that to the FEA system. Now, um, in this case, we're going to actually do it slightly different. We're, gonna, we're going to export a series of things to the um, FEA system. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this graph run. I'm going to go into construction mode because um, in order to export something into construction or into the FEA system you actually have to tell uh, the simulation environment that you want to export it before you run a simulation so that it can collect the data needed uh, to do the export. So on the toolbar there's an export to FEA option. I'm going to select that and I am going to export this arm and when I hit OK, it's going to bring up a dialog because we're doing just a single part analysis here of this one part. It wants to know what the important surfaces are that are contacting other items in the, in the, in the simulation. So if I select this first one, it wants to know where the shaft surface is. I'm going to go to the next one, and it's going to actually just work its throw way through each of these components. Um, and as you solve each of those issues, it will actually remove the exclamation point so you know that you're working through the list properly. So here we're going to actually select that interface there, and last but not least we will do the screw hole where the rubber stopper is mounted. So if I hit OK there, I can zoom back out and we're ready to do FEA. So in the output grapher, we'll bring that back up and do an update here. In the output grapher, if we expand that, the bottom option was export to FEA. And if I expand that now, we have the treb arm. 
listed. So that's the one piece that we selected. Um, the next item here is the time steps. So what that does, I'm going to actually run that simulation once so it can collect all the data while I'm talking about this. So the time steps are a way to set a specific number of steps throughout the simulation that you want to export, a specific number of time intervals. So we're going to let this go ahead and run, but once we're finished, again, we, we could go back and pick specific times um, from the graph, but I'm actually going to go ahead and just select like 25 different spots broken up evenly throughout the entire simulation to export to FEA. That way I can actually run different stress analysis simulations on different times in the assembly um, as, I, as I need to. All right, so it finished its uh, simulation. I'm going to go ahead and right click on the steps and select to generate a series. And by default, it selects 25, and you know that's fine for this in this case. Uh, you could also pick to do 25 only in the last half second of simulation, um, or you can actually surround a specific time if you wanted to. Um, but in this case, 25 is fine uh, for this demonstration. So. When I export that series, you can actually see a list of 25 time frames that have been exported from 0 to 1 second. So with that complete, we are actually in a position where we are ready to leave the dynamic simulation environment and continue on to run an FEA analysis using the motion loads that were just generated in the simulation. So we will, or I will return with a third component of this workshop uh, shortly, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks.